Welcome back, everyone, to Random's Thoughts. We're jumping into another storybook brawl run, still on our quest for 3K. We've unfortunately, as of late, been going in the wrong direction. We did score a win the other day, but since then, it's, uh, it's not been going spectacularly. We had some particularly promising runs that were ended tragically early, and... As I mentioned before, I'm still very much learning exactly what it is that I'm doing right and doing wrong. And in both scenarios, I'm finding difficulty in pinpointing in some of these losses exactly where things went wrong. Some of them are pretty obvious. It's I definitely made a mistake with this pick. Definitely just positioned a character incorrectly. There are a number of obvious things that have manifested as we're doing these various runs but there are other ones where i'm just mystified so we're going to choose here between jack's giant celestial tiger mad catter and mordred unfortunately we don't have unlocked yet i wouldn't really want to play mordred mad catter's okay like i'd be fine with that but we'll go with celestial tiger see if we can score some early treasures and then try and use them to catapult us into the late game i have had successful runs in the past where if we get the jumping bean or something along those lines that you can just go nuts and even late in the game that could be relevant maybe not super late in the game because plus eight plus eight doesn't scale particularly well but it is still useful for a good portion of the game so we'll see how this plays out All right, so we're into pick number one. We're presented a few different things here. Uh, I like Black Cats more than any of those other options. I'm not a huge fan of the Billy Gruff, and Kitty Cut Purse isn't exactly thrilling. We'll take our free reroll. We can lock this in so that we have a chance at getting an upgrade. Now, the problem is, is that we'll get... Essentially, we'll have two two twos, which is far too many twos in a single breath but aside from that it's okay this is exactly the scenario i was about to describe and it manifested on screen that if we go up against one health enemies we do have the opportunity to try and take them down there but we're going to try and continue re-rolling so we got a few re-rolls but we can't find the third black cat just yet it would be sweet and to get that treasure right now and then hopefully get something good but we can't quite do it just yet so we'll let this re-roll we'll get another one next turn and see if uh <clears throat> we can put something together odds are we're not going to roll again going into the next round we'd rather just pick up two things i think Ooh, this Loki setup is pretty good, but Loki does... I don't know if it's often, I don't know what the odds of finding Shrink Spell are, but I've definitely both had on my side, as well as played against opponents, obviously, that have had multiple Shrink Spells early. So I think what we're going to do is pick up Cinderella and pick up, I guess, Blind Mouse. Again, I don't really want to reroll. Buffing one of the cats is not that big of a deal, I don't think. So we'll just have to bank on the idea that we can get an upgrade for the cats later on. Okay, so we should be able to fight through this thing not, well, maybe not. I was about to say by virtue of just having more bodies, but the problem here is <laughs> Polywoggle turned into a very, very large Brave Princess. It's kind of cute what they set up with Merlin there. A little unfortunate for us, but it is what it is. So from here... I think we're going to re-roll. I'm not super enthusiastic about any of these right now. I've talked about Lucky before, and I do like Lucky, but we don't have any kind of support for him. 
quite literally no support. Now, the Queen of Hearts, however, could be very relevant. We don't have a full evil team yet, but we do have, you know, essentially four evil characters, so the Queen could get pretty big. We're kind of wasting a gold here. We'll pick up another Queen. We'll lock the Queen. That seems like a good turn. We'll have six gold available to us, so we could do Queen and then upgrade Blind Mouse, I guess, or just pick up Kitty Cut Purse slash Labyrinth Minotaur. The Minotaur isn't bad because it can buff the cats. This is a problem because we'll never kill the Vampire. I'm not real clear on why Baby Root is in the front here. Now, the silver lining here is we will draw, but the Vampire is clearly a problem for when you have all these little things like this. Um... We could turn the Blind Mouse into a number of evil things, but I think it's probably just safer to take this. I don't know that it's worth doing True Love's Kiss this early. Obviously would have generated some, some uh, quest stacks, or reduced quest stacks. I'm not sure how to look at that on the Cinderella, but it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. We could pick this up now. Again, it has some synergy between the two, but we can just also reroll, try and get an upgraded Queen of Hearts and really accelerate into a powerful mid-game plan. I mean, this is looking upward, but... Admittedly, I haven't had a whole lot of success with evil teams when they get into the late game. I definitely see where they can shine, they just haven't up to this point. This is a pretty big team. I don't know if we're going to get big enough. I mean, we're just kind of damaging things, but not killing anything here. Unfortunately, we lost one there. Yeah, we're not going to be big enough for this. We do shrink those, but... We needed the uh, the frog to punch the minotaur here, <clears throat> and then we might have been okay. We probably would have been okay, but it didn't quite work out that way, and now we're in the low 20s, and it's starting to look very dangerous. Okay, so we're going to do some, take a chance here. Oh, not really what we wanted, but it is an evil character, so, I mean, we'll take it. And then we'll pick up this one. None of this excites me, really, in any way, shape, or form. However, maybe we'll be able to make something happen. The problem here is that, realistically, we want the creeper in the back so that we can get buffs on the Queen of Hearts. But that's just not going to happen. We'd have to do something like this, which I guess isn't the end of the world. This whole setup is not really thrilling me. We could try for a reroll to try and look for a Queen of Hearts on this level. I don't know want, that I want to go to those lengths. Eh, we'll do it. I kind of talked myself into it. We didn't get it, naturally. <laughs> it's kind of risky doing it. We're going into level 4, which is why I wanted to try and find that right now. If possible, obviously, but not possible. That is a rather large set of dwarves. They are pretty big. The good news is, is that the queens are pretty large themselves, so we can make something happen. They do have a Mimic, this very early. Alright, so we're presented with a bunch of good options. Good as in, you know, as compared to evil. We'll re-roll. Uh, I don't really like the supports, like I've said before, but I'm okay with this. I'm not super enthusiastic about buffing the, uh, or uh, rather 
upgrading the creeper. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, and I'm not super excited about the support plan. I would like to get this spell, but we're going to end up killing two of our own units right off the bat. We could resolve that somewhat by doing this. I don't know if it's worth killing this guy. Just to try and complete Cinderella. I think we could wait on the Cinderella and, you know, we'll get our treasure when we get it. Might be wrong there, but we'll we'll stick with that plan. We'll swap this queen to protect it a little bit longer. It has one extra attack. Woohoo. So we're buffing the ranged in slot one. Hopefully we can get a two for one off of that right off the bat, which it looks like we will. Somewhat. I mean, the uh, their ranged kind of did the same thing. They do have a fairy godmother, which means that <laughs> their stuff is going to be virtually immortal. And they have double princess peep. So, on top of getting extra health, they're going to get even more extra health for the Hippocampus, as well as the, the Vulture's just going to be humongous. So we were able to close the gap somewhat so we don't take an enormous amount of damage, but we did take a fair amount, and I'm not super happy about it. <sighs> broccoli is okay. I'm never, like, super excited about broccoli. We'll skip the, the spell on him for now, which may be a mistake. But we are rewarded with an upgrade. We kind of need things to be evil, so we'll go with Lock Chest. We'll get some gold here. This is probably a mistake. It's probably a mistake. So we probably do want to get the Wolf and Sheep's clothing. We don't really have anything to sell right now. I mean, we could sell Cinderella and the Minotaur, but we are that close to... Like, we can get Cinderella completed next turn. So I think we're going to skip that. We need to start scoring some wins. Or we're going to be eliminated very quickly from this. Puff Puffs, huh? That's problematic. The queens are pretty big, but they're not that big. I guess they're big enough, though. We do get there. We do get there. Uh, we'll pick this up. We will complete our quest. I guess we should have completed the quest first. We can get another broccoli, which, I mean, I guess. There are relevant evil treants, which could be good. We'll just put it in for now because we get dark contract, so it's much, much bigger. <clears throat> Again, we need to try and score some wins to just stay in the game at this stage. So we're in this awkward position of kind of, not quite desperation, but close to it. Where we kind of need to just get everything. We need to hit what we need pick-wise, and we need to probably hit specific spells to make sure that we stay alive. Obviously, it isn't 100% required. There's a chance that we're able to do it without it, but 
I'm not feeling very confident right now. So there's a lot of upgraded characters back there. That being said, we do have some enormous queens. We're okay with that. So what do we do here? I don't think we're gonna go into slay. I don't think anyway. I mean, we could just make it a 6-6 six, six for now, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, off the top of my head, well, there's an upgrade. I was going to say, I can't really think of too many evil characters that I want right at the moment at level 5, but we'll pick up a level 3 one and be okay with that. Uh, we can just make a large vein pyre due to dark contract, but I don't really want that. Might have to go with it, though. This is not looking great. Mistakes were made. Uh, this is probably good enough for now. I mean, it's an 1818, which almost guarantees it will trigger. So we'll see how this does. The Dark Contract is kind of carrying us at this stage, because I think we, our team is very, very mediocre. This thing is enormous, and they have a Cupid in the back, so this could be very, very bad. If they, for example, land the Cupid on the Queen, or even the Southern Siren, and punch the other one, we're in deep trouble. Oh look, we're getting one shot by everything. And exactly the nightmare scenario happens. Wow. Wow. Got absolutely smashed. Um. We'll go treasure map. I think we need to take a risk. <clears throat> oh, we were unlocking that this battle too. Okay. Well. I would love to take Fairy Queen's Wand. I think this is the first time I've been presented with it, but... We'll go with Excalibur. I don't think we want these, though. We're just making big things. Like I said, we need to win the next few fights. We took the chicken just because it's going to... Um, <clears throat> it's going to sell for more than it we're paying for it. I guess this will keep the Spellweaver in the front slot. Again, trying to force some two-for-ones. We are fighting somebody who's eliminated. So this is a level 7 treasure. I'm pretty sure treasure map gets things that are levels 2 higher. And the uh, lock chest gives you a level 3 treasure, I'm pretty sure. So I'm not sure why we jumped up the curve to level 7. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But, I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. It worked. Uh, this should be good for now. Uh, we can sell the broccolis. Again, I'm not super excited about playing Sporko. We could audible to something else and get into something other than evil. I was just kind of defaulting to doing that, but that's not actually required at this stage. 
We'll take that because it's upgraded. We're basically going to be selling everything back. And just buying the new, better unit every time. Better minion every time. But between the mummy and the apple tree, I'm hope I mean, we're fighting again somebody who's eliminated, so hopefully we can get through this. The Excalibur removes the possibility of getting more treasures. Not entirely, because we still have quest characters that you could complete things with, but we're pretty much not going to get those, I don't think. That being said, we could just, again, move into Slay. We could move into whatever. Whatever is presented at level 6. Maybe an Echo Wood build, some good boy stuff. I mean, that would be jumping factions or whatever. So this was the Puff Puff guy. Four Puff Puffs. It's a ridiculous amount of Puff Puffs. And the good news is that the apple tree didn't die, so we get multiple activations and we don't have to worry about accidentally dying to <laughs> the eliminated player. This seems like a good payout. Again, we can just buy level 6 stuff. Uh, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll replace this. You probably go here. Like, this seems good. We're up against the lead player, Sir Galahad. He's actually not a champion, a hero, correct myself, that I don't think I've ever actually played Sir Galahad. We could actually reroll and potentially buy something big. We're good. Hmm. I think this is too late to scale. I could be wrong. Like, the Dromungans and stuff like that, if we find them, are probably good enough on their own. What I was thinking here is we could hypothetically just, oh, if we rolled into a really good six drop, we'll sell the chickens and buy it, sort of thing. This is a good boy build, which is not great for us. It also kills the tree, which is not something we wanted to see. Double Echo Wood is not good for us in any way, shape, or form. I mean, that thing is also ball game, but... Well, we do get something there. And we get a Pigamorph? Okay, maybe we're back in business. Maybe we're back in business. Upgraded Echo Wood. Or Ashwood Elm, rather. What am I saying? Echo Wood. So we're up against Snow Angel this time. There's another one. This doesn't increase their health, unfortunately. It only increases their attack, so... I mean, Broccoli's still good, but... It doesn't really help on that front. <clears throat> You're going to get a buff, so I'll just move this over. I don't know if it really matters. We probably want the spells more than the mummy. How much does the mummy do? The mummy does eight. It's not irrelevant. But we'll go with the spells. We haven't actually been using the crystal ball. I need to pay more attention to that. 
I just kind of tunnel visioned on the Excalibur. We probably need to replace the Evil Queen as well. I don't know if it's really cutting it at this stage. So our opponent, one of our opponents does have two Echo Woods, so there aren't as many left in the pool. But I'm hoping that our enormous trees will be able to carry the day. Despite the very quickly growing Vulture and Hippocampus. I mean, it's Rotten Apple Tree is putting in work. But we really need one of these to try and punch it, just so that we can eliminate them cleanly. Otherwise, we're going to have weird things happen. I mean, in this case, we're still doing, obviously, very okay. By very okay, I mean, we're doing fine. And we eliminate our opponents, so sweet. So we got to beat Sir Galahad, and then we can take down a W. Um, don't really have mages. We're just making it bigger. Um, so this was the Echo Wood opponent. We did not find what I was looking for, which was, um, a Pygamorph. Three. Four. Five. We're just replacing, because it's going to be bigger. Uh, we could obviously get a Dramungand or something like that. This might be more important than the spells. I mean, maybe the spells are worth it just to try and hit the... Uh, try and hit Pygamorphs randomly. This will end up being the last fight. Like, one of us is, is going to go down here. Yeah, it probably would have been because we have the good boys set up here. And, of course, that both good boys died. Oh, God. Oh, no. This is exactly what we didn't want to happen. <laughs> I forgot about the Cupid, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, we can't win with what they hit and the way this worked out. Uh, keeping the spells probably... Oh, maybe? No, no way. No, we need it. If it punched this, maybe. But it didn't quite work out, so we'll have to settle for second place. That was a very strong build, and I feel like we made some mistakes at the end. Having the monster book probably would have given us a better chance at winning. Would we have won? I don't know. But... I guess we'll never know. Either way, we'll be happy with the second place. It's been kind of rough getting any kind of wins, let alone, you know, a first place finish. That'll do it for this time, though. So as always, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Black Lives Matter.